May's labor numbers are out, and it looks like the U.S. economy added 390,000 jobs last month, crushing expectations and marking 29 months straight of post-pandemic growth. As reported by the New York Times, the share of people in their prime working years, 25 to 54 years old, participating in the labor market reached 83.4 percent in May, a level not seen since 2007. However, unemployment jumped to 3.7 percent, up from 3.4 in April. According to government data, a majority of unemployed workers said they had a temporary or gig job end or were laid off. So, Jessica, Amber, 390,000 jobs is a lot. It is. I think this graphic that the White House put out is pretty dishonest, though. They have this, of course, negative bar for Trump and then the really high bar for Biden. And the reality is that our economy was purposely shut down by the government. People were forced out of work for quite a long period of time because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it seems pretty natural that these jobs would return as the economy starts to reopen. So I wish the White House would try not to give all of the credit for this to the so-called Biden economic plan when this is just a natural state of recovery after the economy was shut down. Yeah, I do agree. There were natural factors that added to the decline in jobs under Trump. Uh, under Biden's presidency, we have seen job growth reach pre-pandemic levels, but the data representation there is dishonest. Also, we've seen more people working two or three jobs. So when we talk about the way data is reported with job growth, it can be misleading. There is certainly job growth there, though, which is something that the Federal Reserve has said that they really don't want. And they've made it seem like this is a really bad thing for the economy, and that's why they need to raise interest rates, because they have this belief that there's the reverse relationship between uh, unemployment uh, or in unemployment and inflation. So when more people are employed, that's going to bring prices up. It's an inflationary pressure. So their working theory is we're going to raise interest rates, put more people out of a job intentionally, and then less people will have high wages because there will be more competition in the labor market. They'll be willing to take jobs for lower wages and benefits. And then there's going to be less demand and therefore prices will have to fall. The only problem with that is the inflation we've experienced is not demand driven. And also when more people are working, they're producing more. It's not as simple and straightforward with supply and demand as Powell says it is, but he really says that this is an economy that's good for workers and this is a problem. Let's watch Powell say that. This is a labor market in the United States where people can get paid well. It's, it's, it's too hot. You know, it's not it's unsustainably hot, but not notwithstanding that, it's a very, very good labor market for workers, and we, it's our job to to get it into a, to a better place where supply and demand are closer together. It's a good economy for workers, and it's our job to get it to a better place. That's saying the quiet part out loud to me. What do you make of that, Amber? Yeah, I, I guess I look at it a little bit more in terms of I think he's trying to make the point that there does have to be a pretty close match between supply and demand to reduce inflationary pressure. But I hear what you're saying, too. Um, I think the Fed, with this jobs report, has plenty of reasons to lay off of an interest rate increase. Um, we're seeing with these numbers, for example, the household survey finds that about 300,000 people um, reported being unemployed throughout this period. So that helps match up with the number of jobs that were added. And it does look like a lot of people, um, a lot of the job creation rather was people taking on a second job. So the payrolls went up 339,000 plus another, another 93,000 from revisions. But multiple job holders increased and number of people who were self-employed decreased to a total of 467,000. So you have about an even trade-off there to the point where I think the Fed can pause and hold off for longer. Yeah, I think their whole plan of raising interest rates to address inflation hasn't made a lot of sense. And the data now that we're seeing coming in proves it because we've seen inflation start to, to slow down but we are still seeing job growth. So that suggests that the, the relationship they believe exists doesn't. And it's crazy to me that that's the operating premise of the interest rate hikes when Jerome Powell three years ago himself said that we don't really experience that relationship in our economy anymore. Here's him making that point. 
strong one 50 years ago. If you remember the, the, in the 60s, there was a close correlation there. And that, that has gone away, and it's really been... But we a had a different economy then, did we not? Very different economy okay. in so many ways. And, and this, in this way, that really, I would say that period, <clears throat> at least 20 years ago, that period was over, and the relationship between unemployment and inflation became weak. It's become weaker and weaker and weaker. Yeah, I would really like to see them go back to this wisdom that somehow they scrapped from three years ago. Them continually raising interest rates, I think is gonna be much worse for the economy. It sounds like people are already struggling if they're willing to take two, three, multiple jobs. And we still have folks saying that we have a labor shortage. It doesn't seem like that's the case. We have really high labor force participation. It seems that we have people unwilling to take jobs for low wages because prices are so high and because the cost of living is so high. So I hope to not see more interest rate hikes in response to this seemingly uh, really high growth rate jobs report. Yeah, I hear you as someone who just bought a house. I would really like to be able to refinance <laughs> in the next couple of years because comparing my mortgage interest rate to members of my family is quite disturbing. One other thing in this jobs report that I found very interesting is it's actually the first time in a monthly jobs report that artificial intelligence has been listed. Apparently 3,900 people were laid off in May because of the introduction of AI to their uh, labor market. And that's something that I don't think politicians are taking seriously enough. Um, the idea that this technology can potentially put people out of work is uh, really disturbing especially when it comes to working class and low-skilled laborers who might work in the trades, um, although, of course, there are high-skilled trades as well. But um, these are individuals who might not be able to find other work if they're put out of a job by AI unless they have some type of other job training available to them. So this is a worrying trend that I think we definitely need to keep an eye on. Yeah, I think that's just another reason why the relationship of supply and demand can't be used to explain some kind of relationship between employment and inflation. Because if more people are working, they're producing more, you know, supply goes up if demand goes up as well and more people have dollars from their jobs. But also supply is going up in our economy because we have artificial intelligence, we have computers, we have algorithms doing work for us. There are sources of productivity in our economy that are not human beings with jobs. This is gonna change the landscape in our economy and who directs these algorithms? They have a lot of power over what happens in our society. That's a huge concern when I just think about our democracy generally. But from the perspective of economics, if they're displacing people's jobs, we should find a way to say, okay, we all participated in the technology that was the, the necessary catalyst to creating such technology that can be extremely productive. So how do we share the value produced by AI as a society? I think when, if you were to ask someone in the 70s, like, what do you expect the world to be like when we have great artificial intelligence? It's like, do we have a lot more leisure time if computers and robots are able to do some of our work for us? No, we haven't seen the work week decline dramatically. We haven't people we haven't seen people have an increased quality of life and much more leisure time. So I think that's a big question around AI for me. We've had people like Bill Gates introduce the idea of a computer tax where we extract some of the value produced by computers through a tax. If these computers are being productive, perhaps they pay an income tax like everyone else, or rather the corporation that owns the algorithms or artificial intelligence pays the computer tax. We've got to get innovative with these solutions before it gets carried away. Absolutely. I think we both agree that protecting workers from the consequences of maybe too much technology or technology evolving too fast is a really uh, big problem that we have to grapple with. We'll be back with more Rising after this.